All right. Well, Jesse Morrell here, and again in the wilds of Alaska. Isn't this cool? This is a bridge out in the middle of this hiking trail. Beautiful uh, glacier river, this pretty clear glacier water melted right off of uh, the Arctic coming down uh, south. But I wanted to do a little Bible study with this scenic background about this question of, you know, can you lose your salvation? I think that's a matter of great importance. People debate this all the time. When I first joined a church as a new believer, the pastor was teaching that once you're saved, you're always saved. But, you know, the more I read the Bible, the more these verses would pop out, uh, you know, to me that you could actually fall away from the faith. Uh, Jesus said, if a branch abide not in me, then he is uh, cut forth and, uh, you know, burnt, um, or cut off and burnt. And, you know, the once saved, always saved argument about that is, oh, well, that, you know, to abide not in him means someone who was never in him to begin with. But that's, that's not what the Greek word means. Actually, I actually have my Greek New Testament here, but I'm not here to give you a Greek lesson uh, per se, but uh, the word abide there means to continue. And so Jesus said, if you do not abide in him, if you do not continue in him, meaning you start, but you don't finish, then you're cut off and you're burnt. So that seemed to indicate to me that, you know, converts could fall away. Here I was, freshly converted out of drugs and alcohol and a life of crime, and I felt through the scripture, the Holy Spirit was telling me, uh, if you go back to that life of drugs and alcohol, if you go back to that life of crime, well then you're not saved anymore. And that you could lose your salvation. You know, the Bible says, um, it, Jesus said, uh, he that endures unto the end uh, shall be saved. So we're going to have persecutions in this life. We're going to have hardships in this life. Uh, but if we continue and don't fall away. And I have friends who uh, used to preach with me. Some of the old open air preaching videos. You could see some of these guys uh, that would join me on campus. That lived in a minivan with me as we traveled the country preaching. And they're, they're not even serving the Lord anymore. I mean... You know, they're, they're just completely 100% backslidden. You know, so people say, well, they were never truly saved to begin with. Well, there are false converts who were never truly saved to begin with. But the Bible talks about those who have fallen away from the faith. Those who have made shipwreck their faith. And it doesn't make any sense to say, well, they were never saved to begin with. The people that fall away from the faith were never in the faith to begin with. Because if they were never in the faith to begin with, they couldn't really fall away from the faith. So, you know, the logic, I think, I think it really, the two camps, the eternal security camp that says, you know, oh, once you're saved, you're always saved, uh, versus uh, the conditional uh, security camp, which is where I'm at, it goes back to a fundamental understanding of, well, what is the gospel? Uh, if the message of the gospel is, well, you, you can't do anything to be saved. All you have to do is uh, believe in the finished work of Christ and then His righteousness is imputed to you and it doesn't depend upon you in any way. Nothing you do gets you saved. Nothing you do can get you unsaved. Well then, yeah, that makes sense. And if you, you know, oh, once you're saved, you're always saved. Of course, even they say you have to believe in order to be saved. Well, if you have to believe in order to be saved, you have to continue in faith, logically, to continue to be saved. But there, there are, you know, like, false teachers I've heard, uh, even guys like Andy Stanley or Charles Stanley say that, um, you know, if you ever had a moment of faith, even as like a child in Christ, um, if you had a moment of faith in Christ, all your sins were forgiven, past, present, and future. So if you later grow up to become an atheist or grow up to be a Hindu or a Buddhist or a Muslim, oh, you're still saved, they would say. Uh, but that's really not what the Bible says. The Bible says, um, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him would not perish. And that word believeth, it says believeth in the King James, because in the Greek, it's a continual tense. He that is believing, he that continues to believe. It doesn't mean a moment of past faith. It means he that is continuing in the faith uh, will never perish. So, you know, it goes back to a fundamental understanding of what is the message of the gospel. Now, for me, 
I understood that there's conditions to get saved. The Bible says you have to repent of your sins. Uh, because the carnal mind is enmity with God, so you need to have a change of mind. That's repentance, to turn away from your sin. Um, so if you have to turn away from your sin to get saved, then you have to stay away from your sin to stay saved. If you turn from sin to get saved, then if you return to your sins, then you get unsaved. So like as a new convert, I had um, very short um, relapses into alcohol. Um, I went and hung out with, you know, I was you know, 16 years old, new convert, wanted to see some old friends, and they invited me to a party. I thought, okay, sure, I'll go. Um, and I thought, well, I'm here, I'll just drink a beer, because that's what everyone's doing. I'll just have two, I'll have three. And before you know it, I'm drunk, and I'm, you know, a new convert who had turned my back on drugs and alcohol, and the Bible says drunkards will not inherit the kingdom of God. So I'd wake up the next day totally condemned by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit's telling me, look, drunkards are not going to inherit the kingdom of God. You're going to hell again. You're under the wrath of God again. You're condemned again. So I'd be quick to repent, get right with God, and, uh, you know, continue to persevere, to uh, abide in Christ, to continue in holiness. Because the Bible says the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God. If I go back to a life of sin, I'm not saved anymore. So you're under God's wrath if you're in sin. And you're under God's mercy if you're in a state of, uh, if you repent and you, and you are in a state of holiness. Uh, without holiness, no man will see the Lord. So a believer who returns to his old sins is under the wrath of God again until he repents again. Like the prodigal son. People say, well, how, how many times do you have to be born again? It's like, well, as many times as you backslide, you need to be born again. The prodigal son, the Bible says, the prodigal son was alive, and then he was dead, and then he was alive again. And that word again means for the second time. When the Bible says, uh, brethren, if any of you do err from the truth, and, uh, you know, one convert the sinner from the error of his way, that word convert literally means to, in the Greek, means to reconvert, to return. So he's being converted again. Uh, Jesus said to Peter that, uh, that he was going to deny him. And uh, when you are converted, strengthen the brethren, he said. So when you are converted, and again in the Greek, that word converted means to be reconverted, to return. So he's saying when you're converted again, strengthen the brethren. So you see Peter backslid and then got converted again. James 5.20 talks about a brother who would backslide and be converted again. The prodigal son was a man who was alive and then dead and then alive again. So it's not, it's not a once saved, always saved. If you backslide, you need to get saved again. You know, to be born again, it's, yeah, it's an event when you're born, but to, to abide in newness of life uh, is a continual thing. So if you go back to your life of sin, you're no longer in a born-again state. And since sins are forgiven only after they are repented of, a believer who sins, like I did, I got drunk, um, I was condemned until I repented. Then you repent, you ask God to forgive you, and, uh, and you are restored. So it goes back to a person's fundamental understanding of the gospel. Is the gospel a license to sin? Is it an easy believism? Because if there's conditions to getting saved, there's conditions to staying saved. So the Bible says repent and believe to get saved, and then persevere to stay saved. Repent and believe to, to get right with God, and then persevere therein to stay right with God. So it's very simple. If you have to repent of your sins to get saved, then if you become impenitent, if, you were, if, you, if, you're, if you're impenitent over a sin in your life, you're embracing sin in your life, then, then you're under God's wrath again. And that's what the Bible says, after your hard and impenitent heart, you treasure up for yourself wrath that will be revealed in the day of wrath. Uh, the Bible says tribulation and wrath upon every soul of man that does evil. So, 
So yes, yeah, stay saved, people. That's why you see in the book of Acts, uh, Paul was doing follow-up with the churches. Uh, Paul was doing follow-up with the churches. Uh, it says he, he exhorted them to continue in the faith. You know, he went and he planted all these churches on his missionary travels. Then he went back to visit those churches and see how they were doing. It says in the book of Acts that he would encourage them to continue in the grace of God. He exhorted them to continue in the faith. Well, the implication then, if Paul's exhorting them to continue in the faith, the implication is that they could fall. If he's encouraging them to continue in the grace of God, the implication is that they could fall away. And that's what Paul said, that, uh, that even himself, after he had preached to others, he still keeps his body under subjection, at least after he preached to others. He himself will become a reprobate or a castaway. Uh, he said that if you sin willfully after you receive the knowledge of the truth, there remains no more sacrifice for sin but a certain fearful looking out of judgment and fiery indignation which will devour the adversaries. The Bible says, uh, He that despised Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. Of how much sorer punishment suppose ye will he be thought worthy who has trotted underfoot uh, the blood of the new covenant and has done despite to the spirit of grace. So here it's saying that, uh, that if you, you know the gospel, you hear the gospel, you're sanctified by the blood. If you continue in sin, if you willfully sin, then uh, you're under the wrath of God, the anger of God, the, the indignation of God. So it's not like the atonement makes you once saved, always saved. Uh, to the contrary, actually, there's more punishment for, tra for trampling the blood of Christ underfoot than there is for trampling the law underfoot. Um, you're in a worse condition. And the Bible talks about those who fall away, how their, their latter end is worse than before. If they've escaped the pollutions of the world, Peter says, and they're once again entangled in them. So, I mean, the only people that really want to like hold on to this eternal security doctrine are the people who, number one, maybe they were never truly saved to begin with. And so, you know, they're like, oh, well, we sin every day. We all sin. And, uh, oh, no, if you, if you could lose your salvation, you would because we sin every day. So they, they, their only hope is in eternal security where they could sin every day and it doesn't matter. Um, but they, I think they, were, they are the people that were never truly saved to begin with because they, they don't understand the conditions of salvation, that you have to repent of your sin. You have to forsake your sin. You can't just live a lifestyle, a practice of sin and be saved. He that sins is of the devil. I mean, if you're sinning every day, you're not saved. If you haven't repented of your sin, you're not saved. So, a lot of people who believe in once saved, always saved, were never truly saved to begin with. Because they don't understand the conditions of salvation. So they hold on to this, uh, this imaginary doctrine, which is really the same lie that the devil told in the beginning. You will not surely die. What does God say? The soul that sinneth, it shall die. So it's very practical for your life. Of course, for me, it was practical because, you know, I was, I was a drug addict. I was an alcoholic. I was a criminal. It's not like I was just a good person in society. And, um, you know, so I, you know, I needed to turn from my sin. I needed to repent of my sin and I need to stay away from my sin. You can't be a Christian drug dealer. You can't be a Christian thief. You can't be a, a, a you know, a Christian uh, drug addict. If you're a Christian, you're a follower of Christ. That's what it means to be Christ-like. So anyways, once saved, always saved is, is a bogus, false, demonic doctrine, which actually Jude talked about, that there would be these men who we talk about, you know, bringing um, uh, damnable doctrines and heresies. Who, that's why Jude said, I have to remind you that after God saved the Israelites out of Egypt, He afterward destroyed them that believed not. So they were destroyed after they got saved. I think Judas was a man who lost his salvation. He said, oh no, Judas was never uh, saved. Well, Jesus told the twelve that... 
um, they had 12 thrones in heaven by which they would judge the 12 tribes of Israel. So Judas had a throne in heaven. But he obviously lost it because Jesus said about Judas, well, it would have been better uh, for him if he had never been born. So Judas never made it to his throne. The Calvinist says, no, he was predestined uh, for destruction. Uh, and the Calvinists believe in a limited atonement where Jesus only died for uh, those who would be saved or the atonement absolutely saves everyone for whom it was made. But at the Last Supper, Jesus told Judas, this is the blood of the new covenant which is shed for you. He said that to all 12 of his apostles. So Jesus shed his blood for Judas. Jesus died for Judas. There was a throne in heaven for Judas. What was Judas chosen for? It says that he was chosen to preach the gospel, heal the sick, and to cast out devils. That's why God chose, or Jesus chose the 12. He didn't choose Judas to betray him. And uh, Judas had a choice, and he could have done otherwise. So I think Judas lost his salvation. Then there was Simeon, the sorcerer who believed the gospel, was baptized by the apostles, but then he wanted to buy the Holy Ghost. And Peter told him to repent, because his heart wasn't right, uh, to repent of this thy wickedness, and uh, I think it's Acts 8.22, repent of this thy wickedness, and pray that perhaps the thought of thine heart might be forgiven you. So here's a man who believes, he is baptized, and now he sins, so he's unforgiven and needs to repent in order to be forgiven. So that's in another example. So you got, you know, so many examples in the Bible. The difference between Judas and Peter, they both backslid. So, oh, well, Jesus called Judas a devil. Yeah, Jesus called Peter Satan. So get behind me, Satan. But the difference between Judas and Peter is that Peter repented and was restored and Judas did not. So, it's very practical doctrine for your life. If you're in sin right now, you're not saved. You need to repent of your sin to get saved. If you return to your sin, you're once again unsaved. Um, persevere in holiness. You know, the fruit of faith. Say, oh, they say, oh, well, no, we're justified by faith, so we can't lose our salvation. No, you could lose the faith. Um, and a uh, life of holiness is the fruit of faith. So you think, oh, we're saved by faith, so that means we can be saved and sin every day. Sinning every day is not a life of faith. Sinning every day is a life of unbelief. If you have faith, you will obey. If you're disobeying, you're walking in unbelief. So don't tell me that, well, we're saved by faith, and therefore we can sin every day and stay saved. No, if you're... If you're if you're living a life of, obe of disobedience and rebellion against God, you're not walking in faith, you're not justified by faith, you're not saved by faith because you don't have faith. So, anyways, it all goes down to just uh, continuing in the faith. And if you really have faith, you'll believe what Jesus said. If you really have faith, you'll believe what Jesus said, which is that he that endures unto the end will be saved. Unless you repent, you will perish. So, it's not a matter of being saved by the law, being justified by the law. It's being saved by grace through, through real, living, true faith. Being saved by grace when you meet the conditions of saving grace, which is repenting of your sin and putting your faith in Christ. Anyways, so it's just a little Bible study, some food for thought. Why a lot of uh, a lot of us, uh, you know, reject and really abhor this doctrine of once saved, always saved, because it doesn't understand what salvation really is. You know, I mean, salvation is a relationship, just like any other relationship. You can't just um, if I sin against my wife, I can't expect to have a good relationship with her. If I'm committing adultery on my wife, I could expect her to leave me. And uh, the Bible says, if you leave God, he, if you forsake God, He will forsake you. That's what the Bible says. It's a relationship. He gave Israel a certificate of divorce. Um, but it says, oh, but my sheep hear my voice. They know my voice and they follow me and they will never perish. Yeah, that's talking about those who uh, hear His voice. Some of those who hear His voice and follow. But if you're a wandering sheep, if you're not following His voice, 
then you're in danger of the wolves. And yeah, he goes after you to, you know, recover you. He leaves the 99 to go after the one. But, uh, but you can't claim that promise that my sheep hear my voice and they follow me and they will never perish if you're not hearing his voice and following him. You know, there's a condition there. So yeah, once saved, always saved, so long as you stay saved. Once saved, always saved, sure, so long as you always meet the conditions of salvation. But if you fail to meet those conditions, if you return to your sin, then you're in trouble with God again. Alright, God bless you guys.